picked the wrong weight and quit sniffing glue. You got the touch. You got the power. Yeah! Hey everybody, it's Tuesday. I didn't do anything yesterday. Uh, well, that's not true. I did a lot of cleanup yesterday, and I did a lot of moaning around yesterday because I just finished up the big Optimus Prime over the weekend, and I was tired. That was a lot of, that was a lot of work, and it's it's true, and, and maybe you have the similar experience. I do get postpartum depression after I finish a big project like that, and after having spent a year on Prime, not constantly, but you know, uh, having it be something that I've been working on for a year. When it was done, it was kind of like, oh, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to equate it to giving birth or anything because, you know, that would be stupid. But uh, it is an achievement in its own right. And I was kind of feeling the, the, the blues then now that it was done. So what did I do today? Well, today I sat down and started figuring out what I could do to fix some of the problems that I had with Prime. And the first one was uh, this matrix. Now I'm gonna repaint this because I just don't care for the way the details are handled. I would rather add some more color to it. But the first thing I did was fix the problem of you having to remove, I'm sorry, if you guys don't watch the regular Optimus build, if you didn't watch that and you're just watching my regular weekly updates, this is going to sound confusing to you, I'm sorry, but I, I'll get back to regular model building in a minute, I swear. But first thing I did was take the, this is the, the, the way you had to do it, was you had to take the back off, hit the switch, put the back back on it. Well, that's no bueno. Why would anybody want to do that? So I built this little extender for the button, and it's basically a piece of square stock with a uh, round with a piece of a uh, rod going into the uh, top of it and I just made a little thing that would fit over top of that that button uh, the hard part was gauging where the hole needed to be drilled in this and I did end up making it a little bit bigger than it needed to be because my first guess was not exactly on target so uh, um, I could have made that smaller but what the heck and uh, then I just cut the rod to length and now you can do this from the outside without having to open it up. This is a simple fix. Agora should have thought of that. They should have done it. I know why they didn't do it because this piece here is the same exact thing as this piece here. And they just molded two of them. And then they would have had to have somebody add that hole. But, you know, maybe something in the instructions that could have said, hey, drill a hole there. That wasn't that tough to do. Uh, so now I am working on the other main problem with this which is when you close it it doesn't want to hold its shape it doesn't want to stay closed so I'm making up something I'm trying to see if this will work uh, if I do it top and bottom it maybe it'll add some stability and what I'm thinking is putting some little blocks here that I can make look like gears or flanges or something that uh, it would have been nice to have another little like magnet to hold them in place but uh, I'm seeing what this looks like top, and I'll do this on the bottom, but then I want to do one on the underside here, something like this, so that the, uh, the pin will actually uh, fit inside it and hold it tighter together. Hopefully when I'm done I can show you and uh, it'll be a little bit more clear as to what the, what the effect was supposed to be. But that's what I'm doing today. I'm kind of easing myself out of prime mode and back into model building. The other thing I want to do is I want to sand some of these seams and putty them. Not these ones, obviously, because those are where the parts open. But um, there's a big seam down the bottom here. And uh, there's a seam right in here I don't like. And if I can fix those and sand them and repaint because... Um, yeah, it's gunmetal. I might leave like this door gunmetal, but most of it should be black. It should be a black gun. It was always black in the cartoon, and that's what I remember. So I'm going to, uh, and, oh, this was the big seam I didn't like, is this one going down through this bottom barrel here. Um, 
that's just no good. I need to put a clamp on that and pull it in tighter with uh, uh, some clamps and some CA to hold that down. And um, I don't know exactly what kind of paint they're plastic they put on this or paint they put on this, but you got to sand it all the way down to bare plastic to get the glue to stick to it. So we're going to be cleaning up the blaster. We're going to be finishing up on the um, uh, matrix here. And uh, then I swear we'll get into uh, some regular model building. Okay, I think I've accomplished at least half the goal. Uh, you notice it lays straight without falling over all over the place. Uh, what I did is I put these little alignment blocks in here. And the secret is to put one underneath there so that it fully clips over top of that. And another one there. And uh, when you put the, everything together and line them up, it holds it together in such a way that you can leave it sit without it to, you can sit it up that way and it won't, it'll more or less stay together. I may need to add some more of those. It was acting much better before I put the camera on it. Um, but yeah. You know... That got me thinking. That got me thinking about batteries. Not batteries. That got me thinking about magnets. If I put a magnet right there. That might. That might. I don't know. I don't have any. I don't think I've got any magnets that thin. I'll have to check. But um, at least I can sit it here and it doesn't fall over. Or I can lean it up. I might need to add just a couple more of those reinforcers, but uh, it's getting there. Okay, so I've done a lot of work on the seams, on particularly on the blaster today, and I've put a coat of gray on it as a primer, taped off the areas that I want to keep the uh, the gunmetal that it came in. Um, so I'm ready to. I can I can paint these in later. I'm not worried about taping those off now. I can mask that and repaint the silver. Um, but I think I'm ready to put a, a first coat at least of black on this and making sure there you go making sure that I don't I want to be very careful around here because that's where the trigger is and or literally the trigger that is the uh, uh, the switch and I don't want to get that gummed up with paint so now I'm ready to put a first coat of black on this I've been playing with uh, uh, coppers and bronzes on the uh, matrix so I've got that looking good I'm gonna put a highlight on that tomorrow but that's ready to go and then I can paint the handles uh, so let's put some black on this not not so much that it's gonna plaster I don't want to soak the whole thing but I want to get a good base coat on that I can uh, build on tomorrow well good morning everybody it's Wednesday work is continuing on the repaint of the matrix and the blaster the blaster is hanging in the other room because I've put a coat of satin over top of the black that I painted yesterday and we'll see how well that goes I have painted the ball of this with a combination of uh, bronze and titanium gold or I'm sorry gold leaf and a little bit of yellow on the highlights here so uh, that'll look fun and I'm expecting that when I hit this with the satin coat it's really going to make those colors pop um, I'm still thinking I need to go in and do a highlight pass on some of the uh, metal here with a silver and then maybe go in with the uh, the black wash on some of these recesses and that'll finish it up if you can hear in the background the printer is printing because I have taken I have taken the bait I have been taunted long enough I took the bait yesterday and uh, I am reprinting the uh, Star Trek concept shuttle Galileo uh, at the actual size it's supposed to be remember when I did the first one I said it was like 50% of the actual size this one is this one is going to be actual size and I'm going to do lighting and all kinds of stuff in it so well not all kinds of stuff just lighting um, but I'm going to be uh, dressing it up so uh, that those parts are printing now as a as a helpful hint this is how big the nacelle is with the, the cell cap in it like that uh, so it, yeah it's gonna be a little bit bigger than the last one morning everybody it's Thursday the gateway to the weekend and I am transition transitioning over 
to my next project. Uh, yes, I have finished the the big uh, matrix of leadership. I did all the, the painting, and you notice, hey, it stays together now. It's because of these tabs I put in here. And also, I can light it up with my bare hands without having to open it up. So, yay. Okay, that's done. Turn it back off. I can put it out with Prime. And the blaster is done. Got some dust on here from where I was sanding. Um, clean that off. But yeah, see now it's still light, still does all of that stuff. But now it is much more appropriately uh, prime colored. I left the uh, gunmetal on some of these spots, notably the the doors and the hatches that move. I left those on there, what the heck. But I did paint it mostly black with some uh, silver accents. So we are uh, good to go on that. And I can open it up to change the batteries here. Make sure I didn't seal that uh, with paint. But no, that's good to go. So I'm going to put these back out with Prime and I will get on to the new project. I'm starting to channel wiring, uh, which although Jeff has done a great job of providing some wire chases, they don't line up exactly and there's a couple spots where they're missing. Uh, so you just have to do it. I mean, you can't treat pieces that come out of a 3D printer like they are complete styrene, you know, professionally, and I was, I'm not going to say professionally, that's an insult, um, commercially created. There is still, uh, I treat these more like resin kits where there is still some sanding and filing and adaptations that need to be made. Uh, here is the pylon, for example. It sweeps down and then comes straight up back up like this, and yes, I am putting them together the right way this time. That pylon goes like that. Now, to get a wire to do, electrical wire to do that, not even, that's more than a 90 degree bend. A, a huge of a bend, oh, sorry, it goes like that. See, I almost had it backwards again. Uh, to, get, to get it to do that bend uh, is nigh on impossible. So you have to, he's got the channel built into the, uh, um, Three, to the file so when you print it it has this wide channel in here but and it makes that turn but it's hard for it to make that this turn at the bottom so what I want it to do is come straight out the bottom turn around and feed it back out through the other one uh, the other way so um, I've got a wire that will do that now I've got a hole I had to cut this hole in the bottom Again, no big, uh, you know, no big heartache to do because, you know, it's, if you're working with enough models, you can do the, you can learn how to do these things. But see, now I've got a wire that goes all the way through. And now I would turn around and turn and push that wire back up through the other way. That's all it, that's all it would take to do. I need to enlarge that. This uh, ends up sitting on the ground. So uh, you could cover that with a plate if you wanted to, or just put a little putty back over that hole when you're done, and you are uh, you are whistling down the road. You are happy. Now, at the top part here, I had to drill this hole so that when it comes out, it goes into the tub like so. Comes in through here. The uh, interior cockpit of this cuts off about here. There's a back wall that cuts off about there. So all of this is wiring and battery storage and all of that. So um, this go, kind of goes over it like that. Give you an idea. Of course I've got to put the floor in. Floor goes in like that. But I mean there's your there's your business end. This is all battery and stuff. So um, We've got plenty of room back there. All I need to do is to make that wire get back to here. And that's where I'm at now. And uh, that's, then, of course, um, all that I'm thinking of putting in the uh, nacelle is a light for the front. I had thought about putting a little marker, uh, like a navigation light back here. I still may do that. 
I still I still might do that I haven't quite uh, decided but if I can get three wires down through here I would need a common ground and then two power lines so I would need three of these really thin wires to go and make that drastic turn on the uh, on the pylon so that's kind of where I'm at today I am uh, doing a lot of fine tuning and filing and finishing of things like this is the that's the bottom that's the bottom of the door but if you were going to make that the step then it probably needs to have something in there I have to figure that out I am going to make this in the landed configuration so uh, I need to uh, put the door I'm going to do that there's room underneath to run to run wiring it helps if all of this is in camera there's room, there's room underneath here for a wire chase so I can light up the uh, front console and run that wiring down through and also make that go into the back. Um, it's going to be a fun kit. Uh, the walls on this are very thick. If I had, a, if I had uh, one question or one comment to make to Jeff, it would be to thin down the walls some. But I know that that means everything else kind of have to get, you can't touch that without touching all of the rest of the parts because then that means they all have to grow to, to fill the, uh, the area of the thin wall. So it's kind of a can of worms to open that up. And then this will go here. And the seats go in there. It's gonna be it's gonna be neat. It's gonna be a lot more effective than I could do on the smaller version. And of course, that's gonna go on that side. Okay, now I'm calling this a success. I've got wire two wires coming down the pylon, up the other pylon, and into the uh, cavity here. And that's all I need. Um, I would like to put, of course, I need to find, there it is, in the cell, and then put an end cap on there. I'm going to go looking for a clear um, crystal marble something to go in the end there. I don't have uh, the capability of printing anything clear, so I'm going to have to try to find a, a found object that'll meet those criteria, but uh, that shouldn't be too hard to find. But, uh, yeah, it's it's going to work. It's uh, just going to take a bit of fiddling. Okay, we're getting great results. Messy, but great. Uh, I've got the wings, the pylons in place. Uh, I've got some, a big amount of, uh, to me, a plastic putty. These seams are actually pretty good, but I want them to disappear completely. So I've got some uh, putty on that, and I'm going to give that all night to, to cure. Uh, I, I have been rushing that putty in the past and that's not a good solution so uh, what I'm going to do here is kind of map out where these wires need to be so that I can cut little notches in the floor and that will allow the floor to uh, lay flat and I need to do one up front for the console actually the console it's probably going to end up being drilled down through the center, so I'm not going to be too worried about that. I printed up a few extra of these, a few, a couple extra of these, because I want to uh, drill these out, uh, and I, in case I make a boo-boo, I don't want to have to uh, then decide to go back and reprint something. If I can print up separate, you know, a couple, three, all this is going to cost me is that much resin. Um, and they all print at the same time and I throw them on the throw them on the plate with something else and uh, see now because I want to leave this completely alone that's why I want to have something else the separate from this to work on and the nice thing about this yes I've got these on the right way is that uh, when time comes I can put the pylons on and kind of or the nacelles on and kind of level and re-level the nacelles back on there this will sit on the ground it's got a, a third leg in the back um, I need to think about how I'm going to access batteries there is a spot in the top 
where there's a detail in the back, you know, right about in here. I'm thinking maybe I could cut that out and make that pop out and be able to get into it that way. I want to fit these doors, but that means I, would, I can't. I, don't, I want to fit the doors, but I can't because it means getting in here and getting those fitted and that really is something I need to leave alone. So actually I think I'm going to move it completely off of my table so that I cannot mess with it. I've got the uh, some, well, I've got the, the extra panels uh, in the dryer that, or the uh, UV that's what you're hearing in the background. This was something I did not use in the small version because you weren't going to be able to see it all that well but it has a light panel at the top I want to try to use these guys that I've had forever and haven't found a good way to use. And that is this light panel. It's basically just an LED with a, uh, uh, you know, stuck in this fancy thing here. What I'd like to do is find a way to use that like a ceiling light fixture. I think that would be neat. So, uh, I have to tell I print the top out, which is going to be today's project. It's going to take all day to print the top hull. I need to see what the clearance is between this and the roof. I think it may not be as good as I'm hoping. That's what, why, if I have to, I can use one of these smaller ones. I can use one of these smaller ones inside of the uh, piece that that was designed for it, but. I have to, would have to print and clear. This could actually just fit down inside it like that. And I think that might be what I have to use. I could shim this up in such a way that it sits level with the top. If I just furred that out with some sheet stock, it would look like this from the bottom. Let me uh, flip that over. It would look like this from the bottom and I could just center it in there I think that would give me some nice even lighting okay I've just discovered the best way to make sure your stuff works the first time is to print multiples I see I printed multiples and I don't even need them now because they cleaned out fine the first time so I got that cleaned out and I got this guy cleaned out and I did a channel wire channel there so now I'm able to put, uh, I think what I'm going to do is put clear resin in those. This I might have to put a piece of clear styrene in first and then tack it in place with the clear resin. And then uh, put the decals over it that uh, uh, Jeff has made up. But uh, that's going to go about, about here. It goes something like that. And then I've got the, the chairs, and then this guy goes over the top like that. Well, it's Friday, the last work day of the week. Last work day on this concept shuttle. Uh, I am uh, deep in the midst of scratch building and, and printing and all that kind of fun stuff. Now, I will tell you, this probably is the single biggest piece I have ever printed and have it come out beautiful one time in one spot, at, you know, in one printing. This is very nice, excellent. Um, and to show you how much bigger it is than the original kit that I did, you can kind of sit one down on top of the other. Um, I'm going to be going the entire swine on this, though. I want to put, uh, I want to put lights and uh, that kind of fun stuff in it. So I am right now. I I'm kind of in the midst of. I have to go out to the uh, craft store, a couple other places to look because I need uh, I need Bassard collectors. I cannot print clear. I have no desire to learn to print clear or, or wish to clean out my printer to put clear resin in. So um, I need to recreate those. Now the windows and such, I'm hoping I can uh, use some, uh, use some sheet styrene or some... Uh, like I did for the Maria tube, use a water bottle or something, something that's got that approximate curve in it and that I can uh, glue it in place. But the domes are a different animal. So uh, I'm going to be going out and start to look for those. I want to do this version with doors open 
and uh, all, all of the uh, availability to see into the inside. So I am also printing up some extra sets of doors just in case I need to, uh, or I, I sand too much off of one, or I need to experiment. The little pieces I can go ahead and make spares of now, like I, like I did on this one yesterday. I'll print up a bunch of spares and probably not need them. But um, better safe than sorry in this case. So what I'd like to do now is, I, this has got a coat of primer on it. I'm going to uh, uh, sand it a little bit. Put another coat of primer on it maybe set it to the side while i am uh working on the uh underside which is out in the other room it's got a coat of uh primer on it as well i'm from looking at what i've done here on this kit i can tell that i want to do um i want to do the uh dark gray this dark gray i want to do that a little bit lighter uh, that's almost a little too dark there so I can go lighter on that and maybe even uh, lighter on this still but yeah uh, I see I, when I was when I was printing this I was thinking ahead of where I want to put my uh, strobes this is just a tiny bit off I need to move it to a right about there but uh, I incorporated my drain holes into my lighting plan so that these two back here that I wanted to make uh, navs, uh, navs red and green uh, I just made uh, drain holes out of them so I can already put the LED in place I just might need to drill that out a little bit bigger and we'll be good to go um, the top of this is uh, going to go like that so I have a feeling that from this point forward I need to paint the inside hull only that much because of this and um, yeah I'm starting to figure out my, my panel lighting and all that kind of stuff so this is this is the fun part and what I don't have I can't that I can't uh, print I am scratch building I'm back from running around trying to find uh, Bassard collectors and uh, you come back to the most obvious solution and it's something like I was kind of resisting doing, but it's robbing Peter to pay Paul. It is using the actual nacelle Brassard collectors, which happen to be the perfect size, but these come from the uh, uh, Galileo kit. And uh, it's true that on the smaller version, it comes way out to the edge of the uh, collar there, and these kind of sit on the inside. But, uh, you know, that works, I gotta say. If I don't think, if I can't find anything better than that, that's what I'm gonna have to use. I just couldn't find anything that, uh, that would do, the closest I found was some, like, round stones, uh, in a craft store. But they were too flat, they weren't domed enough. They, I mean, they were the right circumference, but they only stuck out to about there instead of a full dome. So, that's why I didn't use them. Um, but, uh, we're going to, uh, what's the next thing to do? I guess, uh, um, start working on this light. Got a ton of little things to take care of. Just need to d get to it. Um, I was kind of waiting until I got those results, and now I do. So, I can go ahead and put a primer coat on these and, uh, get them ready to go. Maybe we'll have something to kind of piece together today to show off. So let's get let's get some uh, primer. I think we'll end the week in this cute little piggyback shot that will uh, give you a better idea of the scale difference between these two kits. Slide that one all the way to the back. You would see that that is half again as long. Um, yeah, it's coming along. It's coming along. It's uh, Definitely uh, going to take a lot of sanding and filing and all of that to get it to uh, whip into shape. But I wanted you to see the inside. See, I've got to show you what the chairs look like in there. And the front console, how it's going to fit. Um, I, uh, Like I said, I broke down and just decided to use 
these. I've got something on order from Amazon. I don't know if it'll get here in time to swap out, but uh, if it does, then I will swap it out with that. I'm thinking of just the standard, no blinky, no fancy, no fuss, uh, just a red light in each one of those. And um, we'll go from there. And then we'll have navs back here and the strobe right there. And I've got a, one of Ralph's boards to do that. My biggest point problem at this point is trying to figure out battery access. Do I want to cut a hole here to make a battery uh, plug? I've got room for it. I mean, I could stand a battery up in that area and it would work. It's just a question of whether that's what I want to do. And that, Cat and Kittens, is the week that was. Now, we of the weeks are getting very short uh, before we're getting ready for Wonderfest. I don't know if this will be ready or not to go. I'd kind of like to take it. Uh, I think it'd be neat. It's uh, certainly one of a kind at this point. There's not going to be too many other people that have a have a uh, concept shuttle sitting on the uh, on the contest table. So, yeah, it'd be fun to have it done. We'll see if we can get it. Um, but the, the like I said, the days are growing short. It's it's going to be here before you know it. So uh, until next week, when I'm we're going to be hip deep in this thing all next week. So uh, I hope you don't mind the another hybrid week. Um, that's just the way the things have been running. I'd like to keep things segregated a little bit more, but that's not. Sometimes life doesn't like to uh, doesn't like to accommodate your plans. So until next week, when we'll be back on this shuttle, y'all be safe, be smart, be good to each other, um, build a model, enjoy your life, and be back here next time.